The Roads and Traffic Authority of New South Wales has initiated a detailed and historically important conservation management plan for the Sydney Harbour Bridge and approaches. Development of the plan utilised an extensive team of engineers, heritage specialists, planners, councils and representatives from both the public and private sectors. This is an excellent initiative, showing foresight and leadership for one of Australia's greatest and long-standing icons, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. When it was opened in 1932, the Sydney Harbour Bridge was already the city's most prominent and famous landmark. It soon became Sydney's and possibly the nation's most enduring icon. But the bridge is not an icon of the past. It's a working expression of its original purpose to connect people with each other. To Sydney siders, the Harbour Bridge is more than the city's equivalent of New York's Brooklyn Bridge. There's a little of the Statue of Liberty in the structure as well. It symbolises the gateway to Australia and is a welcome to anyone new and a reassurance to many of continuity. The bridge doesn't just span the gap between the southern and northern shores of the city. It delineates an horizon between water and sky. In form, it's both massive and light. Its girders are a lace of harmony and strength that together form a balanced structure which seems almost perfect for its sight. It's one of those rare man-made objects that, if it didn't exist, its absence would somehow leave the landscape unfinished. The battleship grey colour changes with nature's many moods, making the bridge a barometer of the city's often dramatic and sudden variations in weather patterns. In a real sense, Sydney Cove is the focus of the nation, where culture, symbolised by the Opera House, and communication, symbolised by the bridge, meet the hustle and bustle of commerce and trade. The bridge's location places it at the epicentre of important national celebrations, and its beautiful, curvaceous shape and dignified dominance over the landscape have made it the inspiration for many major works of art. Most Sydney siders and many Australians in other parts of the country have strong feelings towards the bridge. They're emotionally connected to it. Because the bridge is so special to so many people and organisations, and because it is significant as a major transport artery and a national symbol, it requires excellent asset management. Its custodian, the RTA, has taken the initiative to protect and preserve the bridge's fabric and surrounding precincts by producing a conservation management plan. In this plan, the RTA has described and inventoried in great detail every physical part of the bridge so that everyone associated with it can reach an understanding of what it is, what it consists of, what it does and what it represents. But because the bridge is special, it required a special conservation plan, one that also attempts to define the bridge's cultural and spiritual significance and anticipates its role in the Sydney of the future. In preparing the plan, the RTA consulted with engineers, heritage architects, city planners, historians and the general community in order to devise a scheme that would preserve for future generations a bridge that has become the People's Bridge. The RTA's conservation management plan enshrines the bridge's significance, guiding governments, planners, the RTA and the general population in the management of the bridge as both a major transport artery and structure of great national significance. In a city that's constantly changing, the fabric and spirit of the Sydney Harbour Bridge remain essentially the same. But the bridge is a living structure. When it was designed, Sydney's population numbered less than a million. Now four million people live here, and the bridge has had to cope with a huge increase in traffic and changes in the way people move about. Over the bridge's history, trams have been phased out, trains are more frequent, cars are far more numerous, and buses need priority lanes. As well, 
pedestrians and cyclists continue to be major users of the bridge. To meet the challenge of ongoing changes in traffic patterns, new traffic management systems have been devised requiring changes to the bridge's fabric. The Conservation Management Plan ensures that future changes and new installations, as well as those that have been added since the bridge's completion, will all fit in with the style, form and soul of the bridge's original design. In its Conservation and Management Plan, the RTA has sought to balance the often competing demands of heritage and social values with appropriate transport management, commercial considerations, occupational health and safety issues, and modern engineering principles and practices. The plan will be used by everyone associated with the bridge as a guide for future management and development of the bridge, its approaches, and surrounding precincts. The pride felt by the workers who built the Sydney Harbour Bridge is shared by those who work there now and the custodians of the bridge, the RTA. The RTA's approach is to conserve an engineering marvel of the first part of the 20th century with methods and techniques that look towards a new century. The aim is to help one of the nation's major and certainly most famous transport infrastructures deal with the changing needs of existing and future transport systems. Any subsequent plans for the bridge must be made with the intention of enhancing the community's use of the bridge while not negatively impacting on the structure's existing fabric. A working example of the plan's intention to sympathetically utilise modern, safe materials and engineering practices is the replacement of the original creeper cranes with new cranes, whose outward appearance resembles the originals. The new cranes are safer, more efficient and easier to operate than the old, but their design blends perfectly with the style of the bridge. The conservation management plan leans strongly towards a balance of preservation and conservation and practical, realisable engineering solutions. On one hand, the plan recommends encouraging the revival of old engineering crafts, such as hot riveting. On the other, it encourages the development of modern materials that are lighter, more durable and stronger than those that were used in the original construction. The conservation management plan for the Sydney Harbour Bridge serves as an engineering benchmark, not just for the bridge, but also for the management and development of other existing and future significant engineering works and buildings. The RTA's conservation management plan demonstrates that engineering is a living thing, that by using today's technology and processes, we can preserve and enhance the excellence of the past and allow it to influence and inform the great engineering projects that are to come.